Okay, well, I think I've recovered from the error of my ways. So uh, just to set the record straight, I'll put this right out here in front. There we are, NorCal 40B, the latest from the NM0S site. So my previous list of things that were something good to investigate would be uh, this list of things I checked last night. And uh, I think as I mentioned in the previous video, the only one that paid off was C14, which was supposed to be a 47 and was a 473. So we fixed that. And uh, this one is a 473 that is now a 104. But when I look at that, I don't think it really matters. Um, so I'm not gonna change it. And it's up to Kurt if he wants to. Um, it is right here. It's this, what looks to be a bypass cap on pin two of the received mixer. So I don't think it matters probably whether it's a, a 0.01 or a, or pardon me, let's see, C33, my mistake. Let me find that again. At any rate, oh, here it is. C33 is the pin two bypass of the transmit mixer, not the receive mixer. And it's specified as a 0.047, and right now it's a 0.1. So that's something to look into if if uh, we find any issues with the transmit mixer. But for now, I'll leave that one as a as a thing to do. Um, also note that I put Kurt's crystals back with a little bit of spacing underneath them, and they seem to be working fine. So I think we're we're through the receive checkout phase of this thing, and it has seems to be equal gain with the other NorCal 40B that I have. The band isn't in great shape right now, but there's a few stations on. And at home here, normally I have something like S6 noise and I don't get really much. So today's a, a little bit of a rest from some of that noise. Anyway, the, uh, the next interesting bit coming up, I think we're uh, somewhere around session six now, was I just found that, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll adjust you here so you can see the scope. and a little bit of the radio and I'll get rid of one light that seems to wash out the scope that's better and uh, I'll show you what happens when I flip over to the dummy load and then what the next discovery was so I've got a key here I'm going to put that under my elbow for a, <laughs> a little bit of careful transmit testing so we're on the dummy load we've got uh, this stick that's got a uh, small screwdriver tip on it. What we're hoping to do is put a probe on uh, here, TP4, the drive for the transmit and just see that we have a signal coming out. So let's see, I think we also had somebody ask, so I'll do that too, um, what was coming out of the transmit mixer. So let's look at that first. So here is U4 right there. I could zoom in, but, but then you couldn't see the scope. So trust me, I'm going to probe uh, first on pin one. And we can see that and we can measure it. Let's see if we're in the ballpark. So we can take our delta frequency here and get around the bottom of both of those. And that's our VFO coming in, something around two megahertz. So that's good. And then... Uh, Let's see, we can look at pin three, which is TP3, the LO2. And that should be, let me get the hook up. Oh, that's a little bit of, sorry for the phone interference. I'll move that in a minute. Let's see. Well, hopefully that'll just stop, I guess. Anyway, that's TP3, and we expect that to be about 4 megahertz. And probably, let's see what we can find here. No, I don't think we, oh, I, I guess we better transmit it. That would make a, a big difference. Okay, there we go. So let's turn that up here, and we'll measure that one. So that is, we think that's our 
I guess we could go for a little higher. No, that doesn't help much. Anyway, we, we think we're around 4.9. I'm not going to try to find the peak of both of those two. And then we're going to look at the output, which is pin 4. And we're going to probe that. And then we're going to transmit. And I better get a new scale here. There's pin four, there's transmit. Well, I'm not seeing much. And I thought we did a bit ago. No, I'm not seeing much. I don't know what happened there. Ground is on. Oh, wrong chip. Sorry about that. That makes a huge difference. <laughs> All right, back to U4. Now we've got what we expect. Somebody's yelling from the back. I could hear you. So now this is the output of the mixer. And you can see it's got plenty of harmonic content in it. So we think that's probably a good output of the mixer. Um, it's it's kind of hard to tell when you look between peaks here, which one, which set of harmonics we're looking for um, between those two or between, um, I'm not sure, these two, that's, that's seven there. So we'd have to look and see what happens after we get through this next transmit filter. And that's where I think where I discovered the next thing is coming up. So if we, if we go here, that's the signal we just saw. We should see a huge drop in signal through this five picofarad. And then we've got to see this tuned circuit do its job and get us something that looks like seven megahertz out of TP4. The uh, issue I just discovered, and that's why I thought we better film here, or this, that's an old word. I thought we had better video here. <clears throat> All right, we're going into TP4. There we are. And if I transmit, <clears throat> we don't see too much. And if I turn the signal way down, did we miss it? There it was. I think it's the issue of grabbing onto the edge of TP4. that's working. There it is intermittently. And you'll notice something odd about that. Let me see if I can hang on to the probe at, <clears throat> at the same time while I get the thing adjusted there. So I started looking at that and I peaked it. And uh, I thought, well, that's good news. It peaks. So let me get to C39 and we can peak that signal. Well, oh boy, my probe is flaking out or I'm flaking out, I don't know which. Let me see if there's a better place to get that signal. So TP4 is also R11. So let's see where R11 is here. There's R11, that looks pretty easy to grab with a hook. Maybe just not enough signal, so let me see if C39 will help that. Not much. Well, let me tell you what I found before, because it doesn't seem like it's ish, uh, sort of the same, beh same behavior is there. Anyway, let me zoom in. So there is right in the middle of the screen. That should be L6. And let me see if I can get you to see the difference if I get rid of this probe out of here. Let me take the, oh, 
we call it the reference uh, NorCal 40B. I'm just going to lay it right on top. So count the number of turns you see there. Let me see if I can get you better light. And I'll look at this one. You can see there's a lot more turns on this L6 than there is on this L6. So I believe L6 is supposed to have 30 turns of number 28 on a T37-2. So it's red, that's good, but I'm only counting, let's see, we count turns through the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I think we're lacking about 20 turns on that one to get that to resonate at 17 or at seven megahertz. And uh, coincidentally, when it did oscillate a couple of times, it oscillated at 17 megahertz, which won't help us transmit much. So the next thing to do here is uh, figure out if that toroid with 30 turns is, is somewhere else, or if this one just doesn't have enough turns. And then if we look down, these two toroids, we've already checked out, they receive fine and they're not T37-2s. Nobody else here uh, in the corner has 30 turns, so I think we just need to add them to this one. And it's hard to say. I think, let me check, or, or maybe you guys could check, but I think the original NorCal 40B manual had some mistakes in the parts list that I think have since been corrected. So I think Kurt might have been a victim of that. Um, I'll check here quickly and show you what it says on the manual that I downloaded a few minutes ago. And if we look at the inductors and we find L6, you can see that it says 30 turns of number 28. So I don't think I have my original 40B manual around, but I think that's the issue. So we're going to take that one out and add 30 turns to it and put it back and we'll come back around in that will be what session seven to see if we can get it the uh, transmit premix to tune. So thanks for watching. And by the way, thanks for all the comments. It helped a lot. You straightened me out on the, on the uh, wrong schematic. Uh, we still found a couple of issues, but I think we're on the way. We have a working receiver and transmitters coming up. So again, thanks for watching.